It's not dumb if it works. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Hey, welcome back guys, Jason, KM4ACK. Over the last six months or so, I have been enamored by these battery packs or battery banks. Now, some people will call them solar generators, but since they don't generate any solar, I think that's a goofy name, but that's an argument for another day. I've got a video today that's probably going to interest both ham radio operators and RV owners because I had a goofy idea that actually worked. But we'll get to that in just a minute. But first, I want to show you guys what's underneath this cover. Now, that's one of the nice things about this particular pack is they actually send you a cover to go over it. And I like that to keep dust and stuff off of it when it's not in use. Now, I've had this one for, well, I think I got it right before Winter Field Day because I used it for the entire Winter Field Day event. Then I took this one to Hamcation with me down to Orlando. And following Orlando, me and the wife spent two weeks in the RV and I used this multiple times while we were in the RV. Now this is a 2KW unit that Afri sent over to me. And it's got some interesting aspects, or at least one, that the other power stations that I have reviewed did not have available to them. We'll cover that in just a second. Now, it does have all of the usual suspects on the front of the box. Starting on the top left, we've got a DC section here with a on-off switch for this particular section. It has a 12-volt power port right here, or a cigarette lighter, if you will. Interesting thing, when you turn this on, it actually gives you a little cigarette indicator right here telling you that this is hot. It's also got two barrel port connections here. Now these are 12 volts, but they're only three amps. So if you're running anything over QRP, these are not going to do it for you. However, here's the catch with this one that I haven't seen on any of the others. And that's this particular port right here, if I can get the thing to open up. That's an XT60 port and that port puts out 12 volts and at 25 amps. So using this port here, we can easily run a 100 watt radio. Now, we've got a couple of USB-A ports, and then we've got a total of four USB-C ports, uh, 320 watts and a 100 watt. You turn those on with a power button right here. The main power switch is on the top right, and then we even have a handy dandy little light if we need it at night. We do have a beautiful big display right here, giving us all of the information that we need. It tells us how much time we've got remaining, depending on what you've got connected to this. Uh, gives you the output that you're pulling uh, from the unit, whether that's the AC side, which we'll cover here in just a second, or the DC side that you guys have already seen so far. On the side of the unit, it's got a total of six AC outlets here, and those will accept both 15 amp plugs and 20 amp plugs. Now, another cool feature about this unit is it has a built-in UPS, or uninterruptible power supply. So right now, what we've got going on is I've got the unit itself plugged up to the wall. Then on the other side, what we've got is the coffee maker, and it is plugged up right here to the side of the unit. Hopefully you guys can see that on camera. So what we're going to do is I'm going to attempt to run the Keurig. And while it's running, I'm going to go ahead and unplug the unit itself. It should have about a 30 millisecond swap over time. So hopefully it's not even going to interrupt the coffee being brewed. Well, I actually don't have coffee in it. I'm just running water through it for this. But we just started the coffee pot, so we'll let it start pouring out. You can see that uh, we're pulling about 1300 watts and it's inputting 1600 watts. This is coming from the household uh, outlet now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and unplug that. And you'll notice that there was no slowdown or change in the coffee. So you could use this unit to say, plug up between your refrigerator and the wall. If you lost power, this would definitely power your refrigerator for a few hours until you got power back on. Now, as soon as we restore power, 
Let's say the power just came back on. You heard the beep telling you that we've got power back and we're now getting input back into the unit. One other nice touch that they included with this power pack is this handy dandy little storage tray right here. So you can keep all of the power cables stored right here that you need. I've got one for that XT60 to Anderson power pole. That way I can power a 100 watt radio with this, co this cable here and the XT60 port. We've also got the normal power cable for recharging. Speaking of recharging, it's gonna take about two hours to recharge this unit. Now, you also have an XT90 connector to the solar panel connectors here. So this is the way you would power this thing if you wanted to recharge it from a solar panel. Speaking of recharging the unit, you've got both an AC input here for recharging and there's that XT90 connector if you want to recharge from solar. Now, with all of that said, here's the goofy idea that I had and the reason I was so interested in this particular power unit. My RV has 200 amps of lithium iron phosphate batteries available to us to keep us running while we're off grid. However, under really cloudy conditions, we might be limited to the amount of time we can spend off grid. And in this particular RV, I don't have any additional room without eating into my storage space of the RV itself to put additional batteries. However, with this particular power station and this cord right here, I can add an extra 2kW of power to this RV. And here's the way that works. The RV is a 30 amp service if you're connecting to commercial power. And unfortunately, this particular power station doesn't have a 30 amp plug. However, this particular plug right here will adapt me from 30 amps down to a regular household outlet, which works exactly as I expected with that power station. So if the batteries get low on the RV itself, I just connect the regular 30 amp service using this adapter cord to the power station. That will backfeed through the uh, RV itself and actually recharge, well, at least partially recharge my house batteries on the RV itself. So it won't uh, completely double my capacity right now because you are gonna have some inefficiencies when you're going from that DC to AC uh, conversion in the battery pack itself. But it does buy me a couple of extra days just using that power station. And I can leave it in the back of the truck and not have to take up any more room in the RV. And like I said earlier in the video, I tested this both at winter field day and I tested this while we were traveling for three weeks down in Florida. And this has been a beautiful solution. So it might be a way for you to extend your time off grid or add battery capacity to your RV. Now, there are some limits when you do this. Uh, I cannot run the AC unit and I cannot run the microwave. Both of those would kill that battery pack pretty quick anyway. But besides those two items, I can run everything that you see in the RV off of either the house batteries or in some extended runtime with that battery pack.